welcome to my floss tube channel thread the needle my name is Vani and I'm so excited to um, come back so soon after my last video I feel like I'm back in uh, the right kind of groove that I wanted to be this fall we are going to jump right in because I have a uh, quite a bit to talk about uh, and I've gotten it all written down so I'm gonna try and follow and make sure that I don't miss anything that I really wanted to share with you okay let's have a go so first up, let's just start with my uh, whips update. In the last couple of weeks, I was able to work on consistently ish, shall we say, um, my anniversary piece. So let's start with that one. I was able to put in about 318 stitches of progress on this one. And here it is. So as you can see, we're continuing to stitch in the diagonals. And so this one is almost complete. We've just got a little bit more left in that diagonal, but I did continue on here into this diagonal and it's coming out nicely. It's really coming along. And I try not to think about what I'm stitching on while I'm stitching it because that's just weird to kind of concentrate on the details. And really when you're this up close and personally, you can't see it anyway. So it's okay. So then, you know, I don't have to really look at it until I step away from it, but I'm really happy with the progress on it. I know it's not very much, but I'm happy with the little bit of progress that I've made because it just means that I'm stitching on it. And every little bit of progress counts in my books. And that's what I'm looking at. Next up, uh, another of my focus pieces is the Ganesha. Um, now the anniversary piece is my most prominent uh, focus piece for this year up until our anniversary next year because I want to get as close to a finish as I can. Uh, we'll see how close I get and then um, I'll just continue on stitching on it and then frame it when it's ready. My next focus piece that I wanted to see some progress on and it will become my primary focus piece next year after I finish my anniversary piece is Ganesh. <clears throat> I have been stitching on this for quite a number of years. Quite a number. And so uh, it was a focus piece at times and then it hasn't been and so now it is again. And every time I make it a focus piece I tend to see some progress on it. And I'm very happy with the progress. I made 600 stitches progress on this one. And here is the progress I made. As you can see, it's primarily filling in this diagonal right here. And oh, such a joy to stitch on. And as you can see, I have now entered in the confetti area where the medallion is. And so that's gonna slow me down a little bit, but I try to get a certain number of stitches in it every day if I can, or every day that I sit down to stitch. Cause I'm finding um, most days I'm, I'm, I'm really good. And, and by the end of the night, when all the regular life chores are done, I will sit down to stitch some days. There are the occasional ones where I'm just too tired and, or I'm just not in the mood and I don't stress about it. And so that's why it's okay if I don't stitch every day because I don't want to get to the point where I feel forced to stitch because that's no fun for anybody. So I'm really happy with the progress I made on that. Uh, next up, it was the third focus piece that I had uh, going until I finished it in preparation for my next retreat. So this is my retreat piece, uh, better known as Mini Meditation by Heaven and Earth Designs. I call it my retreat piece is because I divided it into sections um, and stitch on a section every time I attend a retreat. And I have another one coming up uh, in a few weeks and I'm very excited, but here it is. So... This is my retreat piece, all ready to go for the next one. It's so much fun. If anyone's wondering what these little squares at the top were, that's where I did a test stitch, a test stitch to see if I wanted to do um, one over one or two over one. And I ended up doing two over one because colors were just a little bit more vibrant and filled in for me. And so, yeah, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this area at my next retreat. I think that's better than maybe going across or, you know, here somewhere. I just really wanted to get to the center and I think I'm going to do that. I think I wanted to make it extra special because the middle of the project is special and this next retreat is extra special because it's my first overseas 
um, retreat that I'm going to be attending, and I am so super excited. I'll tell you all about it when I return. So really, really happy about that. The only thing left to add to this is, uh, I don't know if you can see it. I haven't still decided. So this, uh, it says, I like, I, I kind of like it. It says KNL and then 09, uh, 21. So that was my first retreat. And that was uh, in Atlantica in September of 21. Then, uh, this one says WNL 0522. This one right here. So that was my Wooly NL retreat. So those were both in Newfoundland. And then, because originally I had those letters written in a different floss, I think I tried one of those sparkly DMC threads. I didn't like it. And then I just wanted to know what. So this, I believe, is just a white cotton um, thread. Or maybe it's a satin DMC. Anyway, I felt it's enough that I can... Mm, kind of commemorate the date or the month and the year of when it was stitched but it's not taking away from the design if you get what I mean so I just have to add the dates to the rest of these squares I believe these two were stitched together and I think these two maybe these two were stitched together I'm not sure yes I think so I'll have to check my notes I have it all written down, so I just have to add the dates, but other than that, it's all ready to go. So very excited about that, so I don't have to stitch on that again until I get to the retreat and I map out the next section to stitch, and away we go. Now comes the real uh, progress on some of the uh, rotation pieces that I have uh, going on. First one was the New Start, um, Colors of India by uh, Kaylee Tent Stitch, and... I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this. Like so much. It was so fun to stitch on. I selected fabric from my stash. It, I think it was just a store-bought Michaels um, Ada cloth. It's very starchy and very stiff material. I was too excited to start so I didn't wash it or anything but it is so stiff. I think I'm gonna have to do something to Oh, I might have to soak it for a little bit and then regrid it, but can I just tell you how much fun it was to stitch on? This is uh, 18 count, and oh my god, I'm, ju I'm just going to show you. So, this is it. This is 581 stitches. Even in that, in this small little triangle... I know it may not look like a lot, but I felt like it was, and it, it's just so much fun to stitch on. Already the colors are just so fun. Those greens and blues, I don't know, can I, can I do a close-up and still keep the light? Aha, there we go. So the colors are just so much fun to work with already, and I, I know this is going to be a piece that I'm going to so love working on. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then we move on to... Finally got into, after that new start, I added all of my whips back into my rotation wheel and I was able to finally do a new piece from my rotation. It's been such a long time and the first piece that it landed on was Birds and Blooms and so I added just over 500 stitches on it this, this round. I think that's what I've seems to be working for me whatever besides my focus pieces whatever piece the rotation wheel lands on I try to stitch 500 before moving on to the next project and that's what I did the last uh, couple of weeks let's see if it um, continues to be a good method for me so I did just over 500 stitches and I was able to really fill a lot in in the diagonal that I was working on there we go Oh, the colors are just so vibrant in this. So as you can see, I continued working on this diagonal, filling it in. Like I said, the piece is not very uh, long. I think it only goes to maybe around here, maybe-ish. But it is super long that way. So I've decided to stitch in columns, go all the way down here, then move over a page width and stitch down that way. 
that's how I've decided to do it, I believe. And I'm really, really enjoying this. So much, so much color and detail. A lot of detail coming out in this. I like it a lot. Then we move on to the last piece that uh, I got rotated into, and that was Peacock Fantasy. I'm so glad that the wheel landed on this one because I don't think I've stitched on it at all this year. And I don't even remember when the last time I wa it was that I stitched on it. And I'm so glad I did because I got also on this one just over 500 stitches. And I finished the diagonal minus like one stitch or something. But super, super happy with it. Here, check it out. It is coming along so nicely. The shading and so we've got the top part here. All those feathers are nice. And then look at this wing. Oh, so beautiful. So thoroughly enjoying this. I really, really enjoy every piece that I work on. Yeah. So much fun. So that is it for my whip update. Um, so I was really happy with the amount of stitching I was able to do this time. And I feel like as I get into more of a rhythm and, and, and life gets into more of a routine, I'll be able to stitch some more. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's been lovely. So next up, I want to talk about, um, some haul that I got. I, recently signed up for um, a monthly club. I think it's monthly or maybe it's bi-monthly. I think it's monthly uh, from the sewing shop. That is Kaylee Tenstitch on Instagram. She has a sewing shop and she's on, in, on uh, Flosstube as well. She has a shop where she sells a multitude of things. Amazing um, project bags, amazing fabrics, um, all kinds of tool or, you know, things that you'd use for your craft as well as charts. She charts her own charts as well. And everything on there is amazing. So I decided to join her club and I got the first installment and this is called the prototype club. I think it's because it, it's, uh, for the subscribers, she wants to try new things and, and gauge, you know, what's going to sell and what's, you know, how it's all going to work. And so I still have to respond because with it came a really lovely card asking for me to give my opinion on um, this product. So it's a project bag. So here we have, it's a winter themed project bag, sparkly silver. So right here, you've got this really lovely textured silver material. Then you've got this fabric here, which is the same on the, is it the same on the back? Yes, same on the back. So it's the snow globes with the winter scenes. And then the vinyl front on the inside of the bag is that same silver textured material. So soft, like satiny soft. Then here, the cool part about the vinyl front is it has the tree. And then even better, she's double layered it the vinyl and she's put, it's not tinsel, it's not glitter. What would you call that? I don't even know what you would call that. But anyway, so she's got layer of it so that it kind of like, it can move in between the layers. Then on the zipper pull is the most adorable snowflake ever. I love snowflakes. Isn't that so pretty? I really like that. So Kaylee, I know I haven't messaged you and oops, hang on. Okay. My mic fell off. I'm going to try and edit that out so that it doesn't sound like the crash kaboom on the floor, but so Kaylee, I know I haven't messaged you, uh, regarding this, but I got the bag and I think it's amazing. Um, so much fun. So now I'll put a project in there to store. So next up, what I wanted to discuss was my Christmas plans. I know I spoke a little bit about it last 
a video and I said I wasn't prepared to talk about it because I like to make sure I don't miss out on anything so I wrote everything down. So this year again as I have been doing for the last few years is get um, the coffee advent calendar. That is something I have been getting for I think three or four years at least a couple of years longer than I've been doing the um, vlogmas videos for Christmas. Um, it's just something I would enjoy even if I wasn't doing these videos because <clears throat> I love coffee and it's always a really lovely surprise to get a different flavor every day of the month of December until Christmas. So I'll be doing that again. And um, for those of you who don't know, why don't I start like this? For those of you who don't know, every December I try to do my version of a Vlogmas. So I do a small video for every day leading up to Christmas. I think I call it Bonnie's Christmas Countdown or some such thing. And at the beginning, I open my video by uh, sharing a cup of coffee with you. I enjoy the coffee of the day that comes in my advent calendar while we discuss um, some fun stitching Christmas things. So uh, then the next part of it is involves my Instagram account at my stitch diary where the day before I will put up two projects for you all for all my followers to select which uh, project I should stitch on the following day. So when I'm filming then I will select a random challenge that I have pre-selected and put in a uh, bowl and I'll randomly select a challenge to give myself to apply to the project that was selected via public vote on my Instagram channel. I haven't lost you yet. Once you get into it, it's not as complicated. So that's the second part of my Christmas videos. I will have a random project to be uh, stitched on, followed by a challenge applied to that. Now, I want to try something a little bit different this year with regards to those random challenges. What I want to do, and this was actually suggested by a uh, viewer last year. Um, they suggested that it would be fun if they also selected a project of their own to stitch on during my Vlogmas videos, uh, Christmas countdown videos, and every challenge that I pull, they would apply it to their project that they had decided to stitch on. And we were going to have a hashtag for it. So I would love for anybody to join me in my Vlogmas Christmas countdown and we're going to do a hashtag for my challenges and you can pick whatever project you want to work on for the month of December. It can be different challenge in different projects every day like I do or it could be the same project every day. And we're going to do call it the Bonnie's Vlogmas Stitch Along. Uh, so hashtag VVSAL. And I think it's going to be so much fun. So if anyone out there wants to join me, let me know. Because I, I, I definitely want to follow along with what uh, you're going to be stitching on as well. Uh, the next part of my Christmas countdown is... So I did, for the first time last year, I did a Christmas sti cross stitch. And it, was, it t ended up being into a cute little ornament. Every day there was a new clue and you stitched that clue so that by the end of the 25 days you would have completed an ornament. This year I wanted to do something again like that and I thought I'd just get uh, the same kind of thing that the kit that comes with a daily clue but then I came across something else. So I am sure many of you out there are familiar with the Steel City, Steel City Stitchers. They are a group of friends who started um, Floss Tube I think the most recent video said that they had been doing this for six years. I started watching them maybe about four years ago, but I did start watching their videos from the beginning and I've been following along ever since. And each of them have their own little um, special talents and on, on the side they'll do extra things like one of them sells fabric. Now, the one that I'm interested in this year is Erin. Erin has been dabbling into creating her own little mini charts and she calls them um, kit tins because they come in these little tins and their entire kit inside of it. Your fabric, your pattern, your needle, your needle minder, all of it comes inside. And I always thought it was cool. I don't, and, and they're all full coverage in a sense, 
like there's no it's 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 a small small pattern so it could be for example uh what was one that she has done recently a pumpkin i think she has a she has a lot of fall patterns out so it's a tiny little uh, cross stitch of a pumpkin and it comes in this full um kit and it's put inside a tin so th the concept is throw the tin in your purse and then if you're waiting in line to pick up your kids pull the tin out and do a couple of stitches and away you go so then she announced that she's coming out with a christmas advent kit uh tin subscription or um, you know package and i was like that is what i want to do so i bought it and i'm going to tell you all about it so um Every day you will unwrap a unique fully kitted pattern. Every wrapped package will include finishing supplies to make name tags or ornaments. A new tin, holiday themed needle minder are included and needle and travel scissors will be included as well. I am super excited. I think it's gonna be so much fun. I'm going to try for the first couple of days to completely finish um, each kit that she provides for each day. If I can at least stitch it, because I want to do what I did last year, was where I videoed myself actually stitching the clue that led to the finished piece last year. This year, where each day is going to be a finished piece, including finishing it, uh, I want to see if I can manage that. If I can't, halfway through, if I suddenly decide it's just too much to fully finish, I will at least try to completely stitch on the project. Um, for each day. It seems to be manageable. Each chart is not very big and I think I can manage it. I really want to try my hardest. So if you would like to participate or if you're curious about it, um, she's on Etsy. It's Cat on Creations and I'll post a link in the description or maybe even just, you know, at the bottom of the screen right here. But uh, I thought it was a fun, fun idea and fun kind of thing to do this Christmas. And I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. So thanks, Erin. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, so that brings us to a conclusion of our uh, My Christmas Plans for 2024. I know we're not even at the end of September and I'm already thinking about Christmas. But come on, who isn't, you know? Um, I'm always looking for ideas for the challenges for Christmas. Um, I, I, two years ago when I first did it, or was that, have I been doing it for three years? I don't even remember. But the first few times I did it, the challenges were okay. Some I found a little bit, you know, meh. I thought, okay, maybe this should really be a challenge. And I said, okay, we're going to throw parking in there. We're going to, you know, start a new page or this and that. And some, I found some challenges are doable and some are like, why am I doing this? And so over the last couple of years, I've realized which challenges are manageable. And I really liked some of the ones that I did last year. I even, you know, I've really liked to throw in um, a day where there's a rest day where you're in because everybody knows what December is like. There is always so much going on and it's always sometimes nice to just not have Put pressure on yourself don't put pressure on yourself so i threw in a couple of um relax and watch a christmas movie tonight so i'm going to do that again so if, but if anybody has any ideas uh for the challenges that i can potentially include please let me know i think i asked last year as well and i'm going to try and use some of those ideas but i'm always looking for fresh challenges to add something not too outrageous, um, something that I could put, manage within a night's stitching because that's all I'll spend on each um, selection. And again, I'm really looking forward to seeing if anyone would like to join me in hashtag VVSAL, my Bonnie's Vlogmas Stitch Along. Um, looking forward to it. So I think that's all I have to share for today. I'm so happy you were able to join me. Until next time. Bye, everyone.